All right, what's up guys, Blitzwing are back and today I'm taking a look at, as far as I know, as of today and as of this recording, the very first time this is going to be reviewed on YouTube, I'm taking a look at The Arts Beelzeman. Oh wow, and who's that handsome guy right over there? Very nice. Uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, The Arts, for those of you who are, majority of my viewers are North American and probably don't know what this is. This is a Japanese uh, toy line that is... Uh, uh, focusing on uh, the ability of it, kind it kind of spawned out of uh, another toy line called SH Figure Arts, which focused on Common Rider, which is almost kind of like Super Sentai characters, and this is um, the D Arts line, which is focusing on uh, uh, other branches of other licenses that Bandai Bandai has. You probably know Bandai, right? Uh, so yeah. Um, now, the I never look at, I usually don't look at the packaging, but we gotta look at the packaging for this because it's freaking awesome. So, uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, BL Zaman, right away. Uh, if you don't know who this is, this is the character from uh, the Digimon Tamer season, which there's actually a really nice logo right over here. And it even says Digimon Tamers. If my camera focuses, you could kind of be able to tell. It does say it, trust me. Oh, and by the way, there's some detail right here for you. You, yes, you sitting in your chair right now. Yeah, yeah, you drinking the juice. You can revive impressive scene. You can revive impressive scene, okay. With a lot of joints and ultimate modeling. Nice, doesn't that sound cool? That sounds like something I wanna do. I wanna revive impressive scene and using a lot of joint and ultimate modeling, obviously. So there you go. Very cool, um, nice chrome uh, kind of writing here. It's very shiny, as you can see right there from my light. Uh, we have a cool picture of Beelzeman kind of pointing his gun here, uh, and another gun in his name right over here. A bunch of cool poses on the back over here, and it even says something in Japanese, something like, "You, I will shoot you with my shotgun so that we can revive impressive scene." So yeah, option parts. I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, and then it says DR's quality, so I, I'm, I'm assuming that's good quality, that's what it means. And the top is right there, and by the way, in the front, you could see the figure. So, let's open this up right on camera. I already uncut the plastic. So there's the box, it has an, like a kind of insert and some instructions, which we don't need. So screw that, let's throw that away. Alright, so when you open it, you get this uh, nice tray which are, with a whole bunch of stuff. You get an extra head, which is shouting. Right there, you get two extra hands. Um, I mean, two extra hands with uh, each for each hand, and then you get three guns. So let's open this up carefully and slide him out first. So let me just place him over here, and then I'll grab all the accessories. We'll take a look at the accessories first, actually, because um, they're cool. Why not? We don't need any other reason than that. So let me throw that over there. So, first up, we got the head, which is really neat, has kind of these two nice wires, it has the three eyes that he's so known for, and it has him screaming like, I want to revive, pose, action, scene, whatever it said, I already forgot the joke. But yeah, I'm taking it too far. He kind of has Super Saiyan hair back here, which is cool. I don't need to explain what Super Saiyan hair is to anybody, I hope. Then he has one shotgun, another shotgun, which is of the same sculpt. So two of the shotguns are exactly the same, as you can see. Just so he could dual wield. And then he has another shotgun, which has an extra kind of sculpting on it, right here, as you can see. Um, some kind of little extra barrel or type, some sort of thing. So if we put them side by side, you can tell which... It's the same base, but it has that addition of this extra parts here. Then the hands that he comes with, which is the molester hands, right here. And then he comes with fists, so that he can punch people. And by people, I mean Digimon. So, yeah, there you go. So a whole bunch of accessories, as you can see. Now, as far as switching all the any of these out, I'm only going to do one hand just to show you. So I'll take out the left hand, and let's put the child molester hands. Uh, so it, it has a ball joint, so it's very simple. As you can see right away, there it is. It's on there, and it's staying there, and it's not going anywhere. 
Now the head, same thing, pull. Take the other head, the screaming Super Saiyan head. This is as he's powering up. There you go. By the way, the other head sculpt is just cool. He's like, hey, how you doing? You know? Very, very simple. As far as holding the gun, he, the other accessory, he can do it uh, fairly well. The only thing I have to tell you, don't push it all the way in because if you push it in like this, it's very loose in there and does, it moves too much. So the gun, you actually kind of have to have it a little higher than what you would probably want it to be, just like so. Uh, otherwise, it will look awkward and won't work. So yeah, that's the gun. And then these guns, the ones that are the two, uh, he also has a holster for one, so we could just slide that right in there. There you go. So very cool. Now let's get to the figure itself, now that we looked at all his whole bunch of accessories. Let's take a look at the figure. So let me zoom on in over here. As you can see right away, a whole bunch of detail. Uh, now this is common for this line. Uh, so don't be too shocked. Uh, th this line is known to go all out basically. Uh, so, we have a whole bunch of details. You can see uh, all of this is sculpted. The jacket uh, is sculpted on, but it's like a separate piece here, so it's done very well. Um, he has the kind of uh, red band on this hand. He has the designs over here on the shoulders on both of them with the skulls kind of. Uh, he has the uh, arm plates kind of, I guess you would call them, I was going to say wrist guards, but those are not really wrist guards. Um, he has a cool kind of steampunkish almost look uh, going down uh, in his pants with a whole bunch of metals and stuff. Um, then we go down to the knees, which are also very well uh, done. The shoes right here are cool, a lot of straps and a lot of detail going within the boot itself. If the camera focuses, that would be nice. So there you go. Uh, one thing that I'm a little worried about is these spikes. Uh, they are a little hard, so I'd be really careful with them. Uh, and it's probably a better idea to have him on a stand just so that if he falls or something, these spikes don't break off because that might be a pain in the ass to put back together. I would think so. At least that's what happened on my one of my uh, Kamen Rider double figure arts, um, which sucked. Uh, uh, on the back here, he has these tubes that all move. So that's neat, as you can see, you can kind of mess around with them, very cool. Um, and then he has the, his tail with actually a point of articulation at the top with a ball joint and in the middle, so that's neat. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of detail here and he's definitely accurate. I like uh, a lot the fact that he is, v his arms, well, let me zoom out so you guys can be looking at something a little more interesting and appropriate. Um, his arms are very long, uh, like extra long, which makes him look very cool and kind of non-humanoidish. And I really like that. I think it's a cool addition that they did on this figure, on this D-Art. Um, this is the first D-Art I have, but I do have uh, quite a few figure arts. Uh, so I'm impressed with the detail and all. Uh, now, as far as uh, another thing that this uh, line is very big on is, as it said on the packaging, let me repeat that if I can reach it, a lot of joints, and that is true. That is the most simple way of putting it, I guess, because, I mean, we have, we have a falling off head, that's a feature, no. Okay, I think it's on there now. So, we have a lot of joints. Uh, the neck, I mean, as you can see, it's our... Here, let me try to show you as best as I can. The neck is so articulate, it has two joints up here to allow for a lot of maneuverability, and then the neck itself also moves in and out and side to side. So that's crazy. Uh, he has a ball joint to the uh, hand, but it's done in a cool way of where... Um, what the figure arts also do often where you can pull it down a little bit and then it allows for even more maneuverability this shoulder pads move along with the articulation so that's nice as well he has uh, double jointed elbows which is a little bit of a gripe because the joints themselves are white so you kind of can tell them um, and but I think if as long as you have some sort of pose where they are a little bent it's not as noticeable and I don't think it would bother anyone too much 
um, especially if you're used to this line then you're used to this kind of joint so a, a lot of uh, articulation right here at the elbow he has a lot of articulation at the waist he has articulation where the belt moves uh, so that it uh, it's a separate piece so it doesn't uh, hinder the articulation here and then he even has an ab crunch uh, and um, a ball joint right there at the abs area or as Vangelis put perfectly for these for this for the counterpart the figure line that this line has double jointed everything and triple jointed everything else uh, he has the uh, figure arts uh, leg articulation unfortunately it is a little limited because unlike the common riders this design is not very smooth over here in the thigh area it has a lot of grooves and uh, rivets and stuff so even when you use the little pull down feature where you can pull it down and then try to get some articulation this is about as far as you're going to be able to uh, get it to go which is a little unfortunate and i wish there was a little bit more articulation there especially considering that uh, that's what this line is also known for uh, he has double jointed knees, so that's really neat. As you can see right there, no hindrance. And then he has a ball jointed ankle. So there you go. Uh, no die cast on this guy as far as I can tell. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because uh, a lot of the figure arts line figures are common to have some die cast parts. It's common for them to have some die cast parts. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, this guy unfortunately doesn't. Uh, I still think he's a really neat figure. Now, the quick thing to tell you all who are either thinking of picking this up for the first time or have never picked up a Japanese toy, this is very expensive. This is not a typical cost. Um, this is going to run you about, I think, 27 or maybe even $30. Uh, that is Canadian. <coughs> Sorry. I just uh, kind of choked. Um, I don't know how much will it, uh, will it run in uh, American cost, but uh, yeah, Canadian, and then you also have to add in shipping. So that being said, you got to think whether or not you want to pick something up. Uh, another little thing uh, I wanted to mention was that this guy is uh, just under six inches. He's about five and a half inches or so, maybe a little taller, like five and three quarters. Uh, so he's not a very large figure either. Like, I mean, if I bring a DC Universe Classics figure in here, as you can see, Captain Cold right here, he kind of towers him over him in height and in uh, width. So he's not a bulky figure and he's not a, a very large figure. However, you do get a lot of detail and incredible articulation. Uh, the paint job is really, really well done. I, I don't think I've focused on that enough. It has all the Bandai silvers and the blacks, the different tones of blacks and browns and grays and dark grays. And I think that it, it, it works all these things very well together. Uh, the reason why I'm mentioning the price and all that because I want you to be aware of that because that, that is something that I feel is important uh, when addressing this particular action figure as a... Uh, the cost is something that comes into mind for, I think, if not all collectors, most collectors uh, think of how much something costs and whether or not it's worth their money. Uh, so overall, I'd say if you're a fan of uh, the figures line, definitely pick him up. That's a good, it's a good uh, figure to try out the D-Arts line. I really wanted to give it a, a try and be a one as a character I really liked. So I was like, hey, what the hey? Hey, what the hey? I gotta pick this guy up, you know? So... Uh, I decided to give him a try. Uh, I'm not disappointed. I'm actually quite glad I picked him up. Uh, but that being said, I also really enjoy the figure arts line, which is about the same price line, price tag uh, as well. I'm going to put the link to HLJ's, um, which is where I, I bought this. Uh, I'll put the link in the bottom so you guys can go ahead and buy one if you want as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let's run it out and I'll catch you guys next time. Enjoy your summer, people.